this, AJ. This is a grudge match in the making. This is a fight I'm very excited for. The last time we talked about Angela Hill on this show, um, she ended up not fighting because uh, Amanda Hibas, she ended up pulling out due to COVID. But this is the rematch that we wanted. This is Angela Hill's first loss in the UFC against Tisha Torres so many years ago. And if you watch the press conference, you saw there was a little bit of a PED allegations coming from Angela Hill towards Tisha Torres. And this is the thing where I'm a, I told you guys, folks, on the preview show, I'm, I'm biased. I'm a super big fan of Angela Hill. She's one of my favorite fighters to watch. But I did think it was telling because when I went on Instagram, I saw that Amanda Nunez and Nina Nunez were like, oh, you talking shit on Tisha Torres. Well, guess what? I train at ATT, man. So like she had never got kicked out. We like her X, Y, and Z. Amanda Nunez was all like, I would like to know the person who was over there saying that she was on uh, PEDs because uh, I think I would know where they live and all that shit, right? So I was like, Angela Hill, man, you a strong Strawweight, you don't want to mess with Nunez, you know, and the Nunez family, you don't want to mess with neither of them, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, that, that's a tough household right there. But with that, all that aside, AJ, um, listen, we have a very clear uh, grappler, wrestler versus striker matchup. However, there's been a big transformation. Tisha Torres, she got a, I believe she got the unanimous decision win the first time around. Do you think this fight plays out differently or do you think this is going to mirror the first fight? No, I think this fight plays out a lot differently. We've seen with Angela Hill that she's kind of had that like normal Angela Hill style or she shows up as overkill. Mm-hmm. And she's has that two different looks that she can give. And if she shows up as overkill, which I think she's going to do, it's going to be a very drastically different fight, man. She's become such a great fighter and, and really a crowd pleaser in these last few fights that she's had. And I'm, I'm very excited for this one going forward. How do you see this one playing out? Well, I think that Tisha Torres, man, she is sharp. She is game. And I don't think that we should be counting her out. You know, I do think that she should be the favorite in this fight. But I think Angela Hill has the tools and the growth and the development to be able to turn it around and uh, keep herself from being her having her back on the ground, basically, because that's what she said in the first fight. She's like, I didn't even know how to get up off the ground. And I was actually holding Torres on top of me so she wouldn't hit me. So it's like I wasn't even trying to get up, you know, and that's what you see oftentimes, right? If you're not using your legs, if you're not using the lower half of your body, you're not going to get up you need to get feet on the hips push do whatever you need to do even if you have to give your back do something to get up man don't just sit there and accept the position with that being said though aj man um in terms of like finishes and striking man torres is coming off of a big finish against uh sam hughes i believe right and sam hughes is tough man she's very young in the ufc but she is tough and it's impressive to know that tisha torres got a uh, finish it was actually a first finish of her career believe it or not man so let me ask you this aj angela hill She's got a four inch reach advantage, 60 inches to 64 inches. She's a little bit taller, 5'3 to 5'1. Do you think that now, because she's a Muay Thai striker, and oftentimes Muay Thai strikers, they're not the biggest jab practitioners in the world, right? They want to be in your face, they want to throw strikes, kicks, all that good stuff. You think she's going to be working off of that jab? What do you think is going to be the methodology to keep Tisha Torres away from her, keeping her hands off of Hill? What do you think it's going to be? I don't necessarily think it's going to be the jabs, Derek, but I do think it's going to be that front kick. Mm-hmm. That's one thing we see a lot of Muay Thai guys do. They'll just throw out that front kick like a jab. I um I know Tisha Torres, she literally would throw these crazy combos, just like jumping in, just swinging like a, like literally like a little tiny tornado. There's a reason they call her that. And she even has this one where she'll jump up off her feet and then throw the punch. And I think she's going to be utilizing that a lot, especially with the reach disadvantage. Um, but if Hill wants to maintain that distance, which I think is in her best favor, is either being way too far out maintaining range or up close getting the takedown uh she's gonna have to start utilizing some kicks utilizing some stuff that tisha torres necessarily hasn't ever seen before because man tisha torres's game plan is is literally from the jump attack and be the aggressor and she's really really good at it how do you see this one going do you think she's going to be utilizing a jab something we've never seen from angela hill before or is tiny tornado going to be able to you know keep that pressure up and have those uh very underrated kicks she has working for her at her advantage Well, I think that Angela Hill is definitely going to find herself back on the mat at some point during this fight. I think that she's going to be able to get up. That's going to be very important. But if if her back isn't on the mat, it's going to be against the cage because Tisha Torres, she did a very good job as holding uh, Ioana and Jacek up against the cage, man. And there's very few people who could really like control Ioana and Jacek in any type of position in the octagon. But I will say this, man. Um, I think that Angela Hill should be wary throwing those teeps because all you're doing, they often say, man, when you're fighting a wrestler, when you're fighting somebody who you know wants to take you down, you can't throw kicks. 
kicks, you have to use the hands because they could catch the kick. And once they catch the kick, it puts you right on your butt. You're off balance. You only have one leg to stand off. It takes you off of your base, all of that stuff. So she should just be wary. Obviously, you got to use it. You got to use what you're best at, which is your Muay Thai, but you just got to be wary. Now, let me ask you this, AJ. And when we're talking about uh, strength of schedule, um, listen, both of them have fight some, fought some very tough opponents, but I think that Tisha Torres has a very clear advantage in strength of schedule, even though she's lost a lot of her last five, three of her last five uh, fights have been losses, right? So let me just name it out. She got the big win against Sam Hughes, TKO round one, very impressive. However, I think this was a, this was a last minute pullout or something like that. So it was one of those situations, right? Now you got a fighter, Van Buren. I actually don't know who that is, which is one, you know, I've I got a pretty good grasp on, uh, on the strawweight division. Do you know who that is, AJ? Yeah, it's Brianna Van Buren. She was actually more of a wrestler. She was actually controlling the wrestling the whole time against Tisha Torres, and it was impressive to see Tisha fight her off. So that was actually a pretty good fight she had. Okay, but not a, not a legit striker. But then these next three are legit strikers, right? Mahina Rodriguez, right? Or Marina Rodriguez, right? She got lost a unanimous decision to her, lost a unanimous decision to the former champ, uh, Wei Li Zhang, and then lost a decision to the other former champ, Joanna Yin Jacek, man. So it's like you got a lot of experience in those three losses, which... You know, those next two wins weren't the biggest names, but okay, let's talk Angela Hill. She got another win over Ashley Yoder. Impressive. However, Ashley Yoder's last loss is that took a little steam off of that win, right? Um, Michelle Watterson and Claudia Gadelia, two split decision losses, which I think Angela Hill won both of those fights. I think she should be 5-0 and in her last five. However, you lost, and a loss is a loss the same way a win is a win, man. So we got to count it. You lost two back-to-back. You should have did more. Hopefully, she learned from that. Now, Luke uh, Loma Luke Boon Me, Muay Thai versus Muay Thai and Angela Hill won the battle is that not very impressive right you know it goes to show hey like when it comes to striking Angela Hill is the real fucking deal man and then lastly Hannah Cyphers that was a TKO victory all that being said AJ Angela Hill has the most fights in the UFC strawweight division with 17 but at the same time Tisha Torres she got real credentials karate black belt taekwondo black belt and a BJJ blue belt who gets the job done in this fight and why I think uh, Hill's going to be the one getting the job done in this one, man. I definitely think if she shows up, so there, I, I said before that she has a two different style of fights. You know, you got Angela Hill, like she fought with uh, Michelle Watterson, or you got the Angela Hill that shows up and she's able to perform, get the early dub win. Now, I really like Hill in this fight because I think she's has a little bit more momentum going forward where Tisha Torres, and I think it was actually, they were supposed to fight Tisha Torres and Angela Hill when Tisha fought uh, her last one in, um, let's see, help me out with the name, Derek. Sam Hughes. Ben, uh, yeah, Hughes, Sam Hughes, man. And that was a, a very impressive win by Tisha Torres because she was able to piece her up. There was a, an argument that a finger went in the eye, and that's why Sam wasn't able to see for the TKO win, but nothing showed on the camera. Tisha Torres was just absolutely putting it on her. So in my opinion, I'm going to give my pick now. I think Hill's going to work this one, and actually she's going to do it by submission. We're going to see something crazy where Tisha Torres is coming in, full pressure, Angela Hill is going to be able to work something she hasn't been able to, or at least in her last fight, wasn't able to get done and work a submission takedown, get the submission victory. This one's going to be a very fun fight, especially if Overkill shows up. If not, I think Tisha Torres is going to be able to maintain that tiny tornado style she likes. And with the pressure, hands going a million miles an hour, and we'll see a decision win for that one. But for me personally, I think it's going to be Hill by submission round two. Who you got, Derek? Well, my man, I will have to say you calling out history right there because Angela Hill has won approximately zero fights in her career via submission. So that would definitely be a new trick pulling out of the out of the hat on that one. I see it a little bit differently. I'm still edging it towards Hill. I think Tisha Torres, man, she could win this fight, dude. She really can. But I think every fight starts on the feet. And guess what? Angela Hill, man, if she comes over kill mode, it's going to be a long night for Tisha Torres. I don't think Hill will be able to finish her simply because Tisha Torres has never been knocked out or submitted in any of her career what 17 fights man 13 of those 17 fights coming in the ufc which is an impressive impressive stat to have being that they've already fought before um i think that they know each other very well it's going to be a little bit of a different fight but i got angela hill via decision i think that the closest thing to a finish we're going to get is a standing tko angela hill raining down elbows and teeps and knees and all that craziness but in reality if i'm being honest and not be, you know choosing with my heart not being biased i think angela hill squeezes out a very close decision unanimous win even split against against Tisha Torres. It'll be interesting. It'll be fun to watch, man. It'll definitely be fun. To watch.